So let's consider the effects of having measurement error in one of the explanatory variables and uh, see how that will bias the coefficient on that explanatory variable towards uh, zero. So we'll start with uh, thinking about the, the simplest case where we just have one explanatory variable because the math a little bit easier there. And, and so the question that we have is whether we can uh, whether we can show this with algebra. And uh, let's suppose then that we're estimating this, this equation, y equals beta 0 plus beta 1x. And I've put the tilde over the x to indicate that this is going to be the mismeasured x. So we've measured x uh, mismeasured. And we have some error term uh, v. And uh, the mismeasured x is given by this uh, equation. The mismeasured x is equal to the true x plus wi, where wi, uh, we'll just imagine for now, is just normally distributed, means zero, and uh, has variance uh, sigma w squared. Now, uh, before we before we go on, let's note uh, and some other uh, assumptions. The uh, correlation between the uh, this this measurement error wi and the true x, we'll just assume that there's there's no uh, correlation there. We'll assume that there's no correlation between the measurement error wi uh, and ui, which we're going to call the, the true error. We'll see it in a second. And uh, not really the true error, but the error associated with the, with the regression. And um, we'll also Note that the covariance between sigma uh, xi uh, tilde, the mismeasured uh, x, and uh, uh, wi, uh, since, since xi is uh, defined by this, uh, so the covariance is just sigma, sigma squared w. It's just the variance of, of w because there's, uh, uh, it's just the covariance between wi and wi, which is just the variance of phi. So, so those are just some preliminaries. Um, so now uh, we, we have this vi here that was the error term when we run the regression when the x is mismeasured here. So let's ask ourselves if we can, if we can explore it a little bit uh, about what this vi is, uh, how, how we should think about vi. So let's uh, remember our, our sort of true model is uh, yi equals beta, beta 0 plus beta 1 x where we're not well, we don't have measurement error, plus ui. So here's that ui, that error term, that's the error term in our, uh, that, that takes into account the omitted variables, etc. Um, so rearranging our definition of, of x tilde, we have uh, our, our, our true x uh, is equal to x tilde minus wi. So we'll substitute that into, into our, our equation here, uh, and we get yi equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times, where we substitute x tilde uh, minus w1 plus ui. We do a little bit of uh, rearranging, bring the, bring the beta 1 uh, through, multiply it through, uh, and, and now we can see that vi is equal to this. Uh, so the, remember the vi in this equation here, where we have the mismeasured, uh, the mismeasured uh, x variable. Now we see that that vi can be interpreted as minus beta 1 times wi plus ui. So when we go to estimate the equation with the mismeasured x, we can now ask is this beta 1 hat that we estimate when we, when we actually calculate it with ordinary least squares, is it going to be an unbiased estimate of the true beta 1? The true beta 1 would be the one that would happen that we would estimate, uh, or the population relationship, uh, if, if x was measured correctly. So we, we know from uh, Stock and Watson Chapter 6 uh, that uh, there's a simple formula for representing the bias in an estimated coefficient, and it tells us that in the, as the sample size gets larger, our estimated beta 1 uh, hat approaches the true beta 1 plus the correlation between uh, the explanatory variable and the error uh, times the standard deviation of the error divided by divided by the standard deviation of, of x. So in our case uh, we're estimating this equation so the bias then in uh, the estimated coefficient, where we will substitute in, uh, we have x tilde and we have vi, 
uh, as our explanatory variable in our error term. So, so this then is, is the bias. Now when we think about this correlation between x tilde and vi, correlation coefficients equal to the covariance of x tilde and vi divided by the standard deviation of x tilde uh, times uh, <coughs> standard deviation of vi. So that, that's our just the definition of what the correlation coefficient is. Now it's pretty easy to show that the covariance of x tilde and vi is equal to minus b1 times uh, sigma w squared. So we'll substitute that in when we when we put this minus bi uh, sigma w squared in. We will then have we we've substituted it in here, um, and 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 then this is the rest of the 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 correlation coefficient, right? Um, so so now we do a little bit of uh, a little bit of canceling. These two cancel, and we have uh, x i uh, sorry sigma x tilde sigma x tilde. So that's uh, sigma x tilde squared, uh, and uh, we end up with 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 this ex expression. Uh, but sigma x tilde, uh, the the variance of x uh, of x tilde is is just the variance of uh, x plus wi so it's sigma x uh, the variance of the true uh, x not the one that's mismeasured plus the variance of w because we're assuming there's no covariance no correlation between x and and w the true true x and w so substituting that in we get uh, beta 1 hat equals, uh, or in the limit, approaches beta 1, the true uh, uh, parameter of the, of the relationship, minus uh, beta 1 times sigma w squared divided by sigma uh, u squared plus sigma w squared. Do a little bit of rearranging, right? This is a common factor, so we can multiply beta 1 here by uh, uh, that in the denominator and, and in the numerator, numerator, and then we subtract and, and, and we, get, we get this expression. So when we uh, then take a, take a look at this, we have, we have this expression, and what we notice is that as the sample size gets larger, there's no reason for this expression to go to zero, uh, and in particular, if sigma w is, is big, uh, as, it, as it gets bigger, this whole term uh, goes down. It gets uh, smaller and smaller. So beta 1 hat will approach uh, zero as uh, sigma w uh, squared gets gets bigger. So uh, beta 1 hat is going to be biased towards zero when we have measurement error in the explanatory variable. And the intu intuition there is, is, is pretty clear. If we have an explanatory variable and it's measured with error and it's basically random error, then we can't really estimate the coefficients anymore, right? Instead, we just have this explanatory variable that's sort of bouncing all over the place. So our best uh, estimate of the relationship then is that there is no relationship, that it's, that it's zero. So it's, we're going to end up being biased towards zero uh, if there is measurement error in the explanatory variable.